Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome you to our Google for Startups Accelerator Canada Virtual Demo Day, celebrating the 12 technology startups in our fourth cohort. My name is Iran Karimian, and I lead Google Canada's startup and developer ecosystem efforts. Back in December, we opened applications for our fourth annual Google for Startups Accelerator Canada program. And we received hundreds of applications from startups coast to coast to coast. So today, I'm thrilled for you to hear from the 12 founders from each of the startup teams selected. It's been an absolute privilege working with these inspiring founders and their teams. So today is a celebration of all that they've achieved so far and a look ahead to where they're going next. After 10 weeks, we're here. It's the end of the program. It's been a fun and impactful journey for our founders and their teams as they each develop bespoke OKRs for what they wanted to achieve during our time together. And they've tackled some pretty complex projects around product, design, UX, technical infrastructure, AI, machine learning, data, growth, marketing, sales, people in leadership, and so much more. As usual, it's been a productive 10 weeks. So with that, let's get started. Each startup will have five minutes to share their story and to respond to one question from the audience. So be sure to ask any questions you might have in the chat during their presentations. First up, it's my pleasure to introduce Matthew, CEO and founder of Moves, a Toronto-based startup helping build the collective of the gig economy, solving both the financial challenges and the lack of representation and ownership gig workers experience. Thanks so much for having me today. My name is Matthew Spoke and I'm the founder and CEO of Moves. And we're building the labor app of the gig economy. Now, most of you have probably interacted with the gig economy as consumers, but not many people stop to think about the daily struggles of being a gig worker that's delivering these services to your front door. Now, naturally you've all ordered from DoorDash and Instacart and probably gotten into an Uber on the way to the airport. But the way we see it, the gig economy was not built for its workers. It was built for you, the consumer. Moves exists to fix that. We're building a product that really fundamentally understands the lives and careers of gig workers. And we're addressing those problems one by one. Now, making a career as a gig worker is difficult. You're dealing with cash flow complexities. You're earning across multiple apps and using even more tools just to basically understand how you're performing and how much you're earning, whether they're tracking and accounting apps, whether they're the multiple bank accounts that your pay is getting deposited into. And all of this adds up to a gig worker or the collective of gig workers having no leverage, no power in how decisions are being made that impact their careers on a daily basis. All of that power sits in the hands of big apps like Uber and DoorDash. So when we started building out our roadmap, this was a natural place for us to focus. We started by focusing on cash flow challenges. Our customers and the average gig worker in America is earning on multiple apps every single week. Ours is 2.6 on average every single week. So we built a unified banking experience and an embedded cash advance product that effectively allows gig workers to one, manage their finances from a single account and two, access cash when they need it for unexpected expenses like a broken down car, for example. From there, we've been building tools that allow them to just better understand the overall performance of their business as gig workers working across all these apps. We give them access to tools to track the performance of their earnings, set goals, and a first of its kind rewards program that pays gig workers in fractional stock of the companies that they're working for with the aspiration of a collectively growing the voice and leverage that our user base effectively represents. And we're retaining active gig workers while we do this. Our product today has been in market for about two years and we've got great signals from the most high performing active gig workers in America that they love our product. Uh, active gig workers to us means this is their primary source of income. They're working on multiple apps every single week. And this customer segment is really sticky for us. The customers that do use Moves, they use this as their primary bank account. This is obviously a huge and important metric for the neobank component of our product strategy where customers are using us 35 plus times every single month. And if they try our account, they're 83% likely to switch their direct deposits over to us, signaling a really high intent to con continue using us as a primary account. We've already reached over 50,000 gig workers with very little focus on go-to-market or customer acquisition and just realizing that there's an itch to scratch here. Gig workers feel like they're 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 not well understood and they're underserved as it relates to financial services and their general careers. So we've been able to effectively capture a large segment of gig workers with very little effort. 
Most of this growth has been organic. We see huge growth in both our earned and organic channels, signaling a, a really, really strong potential for us to lean into our members as the primary source of our top of funnel growth. In the process of rolling out our product over the last few years, we've created almost 2,000 individual shareholders amongst our customers, which we feel makes them significantly stronger ambassadors for what we stand for and what our ultimate aspiration is as a business. But we're building something so much bigger than what I've told you. Now, the labor app of the gig economy implies much more than just us helping them manage their money. We want to also help them manage their work. On a daily basis, Moves intends to be the only app a gig worker needs to open. We don't want them to have to open multiple working apps, multiple tracking and accounting apps, and definitely not multiple banking apps. So when we're done, we will have built the single interface for gig workers to build a career, manage their work, and ultimately manage their money. Now, as customers use this product to work and to earn, they'll also be the tip of the spear to refer and help us grow our member base. All, all of our customers share this aspiration for building a gig economy that works for its workers. And as we continue spinning this flywheel, we'll collect more data, we'll unlock network effects, we'll ultimately unleash massive economies of scale. And at the end of this journey, we'll have significantly more leverage in the hands of gig workers versus the companies that they're working for. Now, within our current product and with the current addressable market, there's a $1.8 billion revenue opportunity annually for this product. And that doesn't speak to the expansion opportunities that we see in front of us. Our competitive landscape is fragmented. Apps that focus on one part of the workflow, but not the entirety of it. And so that's where Move stands out and is unique. We are the right team to build this. We're product-led builders. We ship and iterate quickly and frequently. And when we put our focus on a metric, we move it. We're starting to have conversations about fundraising. And if you're excited about what I just said today, I'd love to hear from you and you can reach out to me at the contact below. Thanks so much. Great work, Matt. Way to kick us off. A question from our audience. How big of a market is this? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So uh, two things I'll say on this. For one, statistically, in right before the pandemic, we were talking about north of 50 million Americans that consider themselves freelance or gig economy workers. As recently as 2022, we saw statistics specific to gig work, meaning food delivery, ride share, parcel delivery, the apps that we support, 17% of the American workforce had engaged in this type of work. Our best estimate is that somewhere between 10 and 15 million Americans do this as a primary or meaningful percentage of their income. Uh, so that's, that's sort of the segment, 10 to 15 million Americans. The market opportunity, though, I'd say is represented by effectively the market caps that these companies, Uber, DoorDash, Lyft, and others all collectively represent. These marketplaces are an aggregate of their labor supply, as well as an aggregate of their demand supply or their, their demand aggregation for consumer services. So we think there's a massive opportunity to build a business that coordinates labor in the gig economy, today representing about 10 to 15 million workers. Thank you again, Matt. Thanks so much for having me today. Looking forward to chatting more with all of you. Next, we'll hear from Clavis Studios, based in Edmonton, Alberta. Clavis Studio is an AI ML driven design, visualization, and sourcing platform for end to end business operations. Abby and AO, over to you. Clavis is one simple solution for interior designers to run their business efficiently. We provide design, rendering, and business tools to help interior designers grow their business. See, the typical interior designer goes through five to six apps and tools in a day to help with staging, to help with contract management, to help with floor planning, and so on. Clavis provides an all-inclusive, all-in-one software that helps the interior designer design, visualize, and render all in high definition, as well as access business tools to help them run the business more efficiently. How it works, as a business owner, you design and decorate for your clients in 3D and render in HD, and then provide the ability for them to shop from over 30 retail brands on your dashboard. You also manage your accounts, your work tools, your invoices, and portfolio from the same dashboard, providing an all-in-one toolbox for your business. We make money in three ways, through tiered subscription, trade partnership commission, and design project contracts. Now the interior design software industry is huge. There is an addressable market of 6.9 billion and we're targeting an obtainable market of 0.2 billion out of that. Furniture e-commerce also has a huge available market of 391 billion 
And we're targeting 0.5% of that at 1.9 billion. Now we have a lot of competitors in the space, but none of them provide the end-to-end -end, all in one value that we do to our clients who are future-centric interior design um, experts and future-centric interior decorating experts. I'll hand it over to Ayo to take out traction. Oh, thanks, Abby. To date, we've onboarded 800 and growing subscribers on the Clavis platform. And those subscribers complete 36 active projects monthly. We've also been able to attract initial capital of about a quarter of a million to drive our growth to this point. In 2023, we're looking to close the year at about half a million dollars in top line revenue. We've also identified generative AI to be highly significant to our growth. With the buzz around generative, generative AI, we've identified specific projects and use cases that will help us elevate the use of Clavis Studio in the design industry. By 2026, we would have had a full and ongoing implementation of generative AI to empower interior designers, interior decorators, and, in, and design enthusiasts who are looking for a simple tool to deliver on projects for either their clients or for themselves. And by 2028, we're looking to close the year at top line revenue of 26 million, growing at two times year on year. Our financials actually reflect us hitting our revenue targets since we launched. And by 2025, we're expecting a major inflection point where we're gonna see a significant growth in our revenue and customer base. All of this is happening because we have an amazing team at Clavis Studio as co-founders and an amazing team of technical and business specialists. We've been able to achieve this level of growth to today. We are also supported by a team of advisors that are experts in their field. And we're fundraising. We're currently raising $1.3 million to drive our growth for the next two years. That will give us sufficient runway to hit 8,000 subscribers and drive our market penetration into the US market where we've seen a significant level of adoption of our product, our services, and our technology. Thank you for listening. We'll take questions now. Thank you both. One question for you. How do you try to stand out in an industry with such well-established players? Thank you for that question. Uh, at Clavis Studio, we've seen that our competitors in this space are actually using complicated tools and are focusing on well-established interior designers, and that's okay. But we at Clavis Studio are focused more on the future we are building tools that would support future-centered, future-centric individuals that are newer to the interior design industry. And this would include interior designers, decorators, and enthusiasts looking for simple tools to complete their projects. And we are building a strong pipeline of dedicated users and ambassadors of Clavis so that over the years would have established our brand strongly in the industry. Thank you so much, team. Thank you for having us. Thank you for your time and believing in Clavis Studio. Now, I'm thrilled to introduce Troj AI. Based in St. John, New Brunswick, the Troj AI team helps enterprises manage AI risk through stress testing and audit of AI and machine learning models. What does it cost when AI models fail? My name is Stephen Goddard, and I'm a co-founder at Troj AI and I'd like to provide you with a quick introduction to AI model risk and the work that Troj AI is doing to address that risk. So back to my question, what does it cost when AI fails? Recently, our gracious host today watched 100 billion evaporate from a single chatbot misstep. Granted, while we have limited data points to answer this question, we can bookend this problem and cost at somewhere between 10 million and $100 billion. And I think we can all agree 
that AI failures are going to happen and cost real dollars. The problem Troj AI is solving is the inherent risk of AI models that sees half of all occurrences a model encounters having not been trained into the model. These long tail edge cases require stress testing to explore the competence bounds of models for its robustness to unknown and unpredictable edge cases. Layer on additional vulnerabilities during model development, such as training and data concerns, or known weaknesses in AI backbones, means that every model requires continuous systematic testing to address risk and cybersecurity challenges. In a recent 128 model audit exercise that we completed of open source models taken from some of the best known industry sources, every model contained at least one deficiency. Two thirds failed robustness checks, nearly 70% failed best practices integrity checks, and virtually all of them failed at least one explainability or bias check. From day one, TrojAI has been building tools and solutions to reduce the risk to enterprises from their use of AI. We are rooted in the key tenets of responsible AI, having started with robustness and security, and evolving to address concerns that include fairness, explainability, and of course, privacy. To this end, we published the industry's first secure model development lifecycle framework to nudge a shift left mindset toward building robust and secure AI. Our mission is to reduce risk through the automation of testing. We maximize the value of the tool by minimizing the effort of continuous and routine testing of AI portfolios. A project run shows specific model tests and attack pass rates that allow teams to explore model performance and to inform decisions about model risk and potential mitigation strategies. Our fully containerized solution is deployed on-prem within our client's environment. Working with any da data alongside any platform, we can test any model framework with our extensive library of custom attacks as well as incorporating any number of open source tests if required. Configurable and flexible, we can stress test and surface vulnerabilities and security concerns for computer vision, natural language processing, tabular, and most recently, generative AI. To help inform our solution, we track a number of threat landscapes, such as the MITRE ATLAS matrix, which together with traditional cybersecurity protections, we are able to cover this entire known threat landscape. We could have done this entire pitch today on our recent work on generative AI, but we did not want to eclipse all the other work we've been doing since 2019. So I'll just make a couple of quick points. As you can imagine over the past few months, we have fielded dozens of inquiries from clients, tech research firms, and even VCs wanting to learn about generative AI and large language models, or LLMs. About eight weeks ago, the National Research Council of Canada, our national R&D funding agency, proposed a $1 million research project for Troj AI to build LLM testing and AI firewall protections. And funding for that project was approved last week. A couple of weeks ago, you would have seen an open letter to halt generative AI development until we can ensure robust development practices as there are some real concerns that we need to be addressed. On that very same day, Troj AI was engaged to deploy its AI firewall to protect one of the leading global financial brands in the world in what will be one of the very first commercial deployments for testing and protecting users of generative AI. Of course, our work is part of a much broader community that includes our current investors such as Seattle's based Flying Fish Partners, industry groups like Canada's Center of Excellence for AI, the Vector Institute, or our contributions to Linux Foundation's ML Security Committee. It also includes a tremendous support from our accelerator networks that include Techstars, the Canadian Technology Accelerator in New York, and of course, one of the most recognizable and prestigious accelerators in the world, the folks here at Google Startup. A couple of weeks ago, my colleagues were staring at this sign in an airport and wondering who owns this problem? Is it the folks facing the wrong way who never read this sign? Or might the problem be with those who posted a sign for an audience who will never read it? Pausing AI development is not the solution. 
Rather, it's understanding and acknowledging that every model is vulnerable. And as such, we need to undertake systematic and continuous testing so we know the risks. You cannot manage what you do not know. If you're an active investor in AI companies and you have not met, made a bet on AI risk management, you really should talk to us as we are looking to do a pre-Series A bridge round in the next few months. Thanks. Wow, such important work. Can you tell us how Troj AI plans to compete against the big tech platforms? Ron, thanks for that question. Uh, I think I think that the uh, large tech platforms are focused on other areas of interest. And when it comes to risk management, in particular cybersecurity, there really does require uh, a degree of independence um, to, to provide that testing and assurance that models are performing as intended and are well protected. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Stephen. You're quite welcome. We very much appreciate this opportunity. Thanks. So up next, we have Sharewares, a Vancouver, British Columbia-based clean tech startup on a mission to address the world's shocking waste crisis. Sharewares has built a citywide borrowing platform to supply, sanitize, and track reusable cups and takeout containers for businesses. And food packaging is just the beginning. Over to Cody to tell us more. Hey everyone, this is Cody Irwin, the founder of Sharewares in Vancouver on the unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh Nations. So what's our problem? Well, to be sustainable on this planet, we need to stop producing so much of this. Around the world, 4.7 trillion pounds of garbage ends up in landfills, burned in incinerators, or leaks into our environments. But those are just symptoms. The actual problem is our addiction to this throwaway lifestyle. But how do we compete with the ease and convenience and of, of something that's been ingrained in our society since the 1950s? The ease of this, the convenience of that. That's where Sharewords comes in. Sharewords is a B2B clean tech company that has launched a citywide boring platform for reusable packaging to end our reliance on disposables. Here's how it works. Go into a coffee shop, you order a cup of coffee, and you pay a small deposit to borrow that cup. Then off you go. Then anywhere in the city when you're finished, you can scan that QR code on that cup to find a convenient return location. That QR code is also unique to each one of our products, so we know who to refund when we get that item back, and we do our refunds through email money transfer. Now our technology makes it easy, but we also have to make it convenient so we've proven that anywhere that there's a waste collection stream, there could also be a reuse collection stream. So we have partner retailers that have collection bins inside their shops. We have uh, public bins on street side and in plazas in downtown Vancouver. We even have home and office pickup partners. Alternatively, people can be bringing their items back to us, bottle deposit depot style and get cash refunds for it. That means that the user doesn't even have to use any technology at all. And it makes it fully inclusive um, and affordable and accommodating to anyone in the community. Now on that depot uh, side, our depot is actually also our washing facility. Uh, we see washing facilities as being the new utility for circular cities. So our traction so far has been tremendous. In our first year, we partnered with Tim Hortons. They put our refund QR code technology right on their, cup, uh, their, their cups for their borrowing program and we're their, washing, we're their washing partner. The city of Vancouver is also a customer of ours, and we've launched takeout containers with Skip the Dishes. That's right, we're not just doing coffee cups, we're also in food packaging. So for restaurants, grocery, deli, and bakeries, and we're also in other industries like film, uh, events, and festivals. But our, our technology is not just limited to food packaging. We could be going into numerous other verticals so we could be helping fight the fast fashion waste crisis. We could be having our codes on reusable Amazon shipping packages that you get every week. We can even apply our technology to commodities and even recyclables that you can return from your house and get your refunds back. So why is now the time to launch a sustainability venture? 
Well, the citizens are signaling. They're demanding action. And businesses and governments around the world are getting in on this. We're having widespread bans in countries, including Canada, on single-use items like cutlery, bags, and foodwares. And businesses are investing heavily in ESG reporting. There's been a 30% increase in spend that's, uh, in the last year, and this trend is expected to increase. Why us? Why do we believe that we're going to scale this up for global impact? Well, not only am I fortunate enough to uh, work with such amazing, wonderful, kind-hearted humans, but we also have all the right butts in all the right seats. So we have special specialists and expertise in operations, sales, marketing, management, uh, engineering, finance, and software development. So that's us. So if you'd like to follow along on our journey, then please follow us on Instagram or on LinkedIn. Uh, and if you're an investor looking to get in on the ground floor of an emerging virtually untapped industry and an industry on its bleeding edge, scan this QR code. You go to our, our site to sign up for uh, investor updates on our upcoming fundraising round, uh, or you can go uh, directly to sharewares.ca slash invest. That's sharewares.ca slash invest. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cody. And now for a question from the audience. It seems like you've done a lot in a very short period of time. What's your secret? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, Sharewares is actually a pandemic pivot. Our pre-COVID biz business was in corporate food service, helping a technology manager in office corporate food service. Uh, so basically a logistics company. But then when all offices closed, we were left with a multi-million dollar company, but just with no business model. So this actually was a, an entrepreneur's dream. We had all these resources and, and people and we could do anything that we, we wanted with, uh, with the government support uh, and, the, and their wage and, and rent subsidies. So we set out on a much bigger and more impactful mission, a uh, mission to end the world's waste crisis. Uh, why not, right? Uh, so basically the secret is we, we didn't have to start from scratch. And, and we also got a, a lot of funding from the government and we got about a, a million dollars in non-dilutive funding. So that, uh, that is our secret. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's truly an honor to be part of the, the Google ecosystem and, uh, and, and the lifelong dream. Thank you so much. Next, I'm happy to introduce you to Morpheus Network from Burlington, Ontario. Morpheus Network focuses on helping companies and government organizations eliminate inefficiencies and remove barriers to optimize and automate their supply chain operations. Take it away, Dan. Hi, everybody. My name is Dan Weinberger. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Morpheus Network. Morpheus Network being a supply chain automation platform. So excited to be part of the Google for Startups program. This Google Accelerator has been absolutely amazing. We're developing a brand new uh, platform and portal with Google. Uh, obviously, we have the supply chain middleway we've been working on for years. Excited to put out this brand new product, with Google. Get right into it. Uh, supply chain inefficiency. This is the number one global problem to solve in order to stimulate economic growth. A World Bank statement uh, that it can, is a two trillion dollar opportunity for businesses to eliminate those inefficiencies. Uh, and what are we talking about in supply chain inefficiencies? We're looking for those weak links in the supply chain. In this image here, we have the average supply chain and IBM stat is about 40 points of handling down the average supply chain. We're talking about freight forwarders, customs brokers, shipping companies, shippers and receivers themselves, different banks handling money as well. All these different stakeholders, so many uh, air, uh, points of potential error, human error that can happen. We're going to eliminate that with, with this potential product that we have releasing with Google right now. What are the weakest links in the supply chain? Disconnected systems down the supply chain, of course. Communication gaps for different stakeholders down the supply chain as well. Inflexible software architecture. That's more of an enterprise problem for larger enterprise we're working with. And as well as manual error processes. Manual processes, that's what we're looking to eliminate with this brand new product as well. We're talking about the bigger inflexible software architectures, ERPs such as SAP, which we're a partner of, uh, Oracle, JD Edwards, TMS integrations, TOS integrations, WMS integrations. That's more of a, a larger multinational enterprise problem. We have some great solutions out there, working with Gulf Tainer, the world's largest private porter operator, working with uh, Coca-Cola, working with a couple of different large uh, governments as well in Asia and in South America. These are problems that they use different IT systems. What we're going to focus on with this brand new product we're developing with Google is specifically the SMEs, the small and medium enterprises. 
Let's take a look at the day in the life of a supply chain manager for an SME. 70% of supply chain managers are still using Excel in order to run their supply chain. We're talking about copying and pasting directly out of an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, in that process, uh, there's about three to 5% of companies, 80% of companies have errors, simple errors of the copy and paste, simple, error, simple manual errors that they create. This can mean for a 20% profit margin, one shipment container is five containers worth of loss. The end of a business potentially with one simple error done manually. Uh, the average shipment, about four documents, about 15 minutes per document, takes in a manual fashion about one hour to set up. And what does this result in? 90% of all business CO2 is emitted in their supply chain itself. What we're looking at in this example specifically is a bill of lading, performer invoice, and environmental protection agency form. These are manually created, copy pasted each time, and then supplied manually as well to the different stakeholders, shipping companies, customs brokers, the various warehouses involved as well. What you have at the end is a mass amount of paperwork and a lot of manual process work for the supply chain manager itself. So what we have to do is embrace the technologies that we have, embrace the data that we currently have, don't replace it, embrace, don't replace. And that's what we're doing with our supply chain middleware. We take the data from the different systems, whether it's from Excel, importing into our platform, whether it's in Google contacts, wherever that data sits, you have to pull the data in and then use it in an automated fashion in order to create a ton of optimization and automation all the way down the supply chain. High level overview of the solution. We have over 150 relevant supply chain integrations. We're talking about different shipping companies involved, ERP integrations for enterprises as well. And then we have a workflow engine, it's a drag and drop workflow builder, allowing you to orchestrate and synchronize your supply chain as required. And then on the front end, it's a very simple UI for our users to set up their supply chain, supply documents, whatever's required in order to fulfill the objectives in that workflow engine. And what we're going to show you right now is this amazing new portal powered by Google Cloud. Uh, it's the day in the future of a supply chain manager to be able to complete shipment arrangement and documentation in under one minute. Hopping right into our uh, Google login over here, we have some great Google applications. We're going to focus right on Google Contacts. We see all the different contacts uh, inputted into the system over here. We hop into the Morpheus Network Portal. We sign in with SSO. Since we're already signed into Google, it hops right in. Skip intro. We're going to hit our sync our Google contacts. And then we're going to take a look at the contact catalog synced right away with the Google contacts over here. And then we hop into creating a new shipment. Let's create a shipment here. Let's go from Landstar in Markham, Ontario. And we're going to de deliver it to Telefe in North Carolina. What are we doing over here? We got a gas lift. Uh, it's a single piece. It's a $10,000 unit and a single handling unit itself. And we start our shipment. We got our confetti because in 21 seconds, 21 seconds, we set up the entire shipment. And what am I talking about setting up a shipment? Besides the actual trucking coming in, we have our bill of lading with that exact data being pulled in, not copy pasted, data right in there. We have a performer invoice all set up here. We have our environmental protection agency form for that gas motor as well, all set up as well. Let's take a look at our QR code for our traceability. This is a QR code right, ha right here. You can download it, uh, supply it to your different stakeholders down the line as well. It's actually on the bill of lading as well. That's being scanned on the back end. Uh, and as that's being scanned, let's take a look at our digital footprint over here. And we see the scan just happen right now. And we have that plotted right on a map over here. Any scan throughout the entire shipment be put on this digital footprint. You have the entire traceability of a shipment right on the map. Besides that, of course, guys, we have all these other documents that are created as well, hopping right in in under one minute, we created the entire shipment, including documentation. So the next steps is test our onboarding. We have shipping companies, uh, sh customs brokers, shipping companies that are brokers as well, uh, and also community members as well, looking to hop on over a hundred different testers to start testing our platform before we go live and get actual users, actual supply chains being set up in the portal itself. Thank you guys so much for seeing the demonstration of what we've been working on with this great Google Accelerator. And as always, everybody, have a great day. Dan, the audience wants to know, how has your company managed to undertake projects across diverse global locations, including a golf trainer in Dubai and partnerships with governmental and corporate entities in North and South America?
Great question. Thank you for that. And just like this Google for Startups program, it's all about partnerships and growing in parallel. Uh, whether you're a shipping company, whether you're a customs broker, whether you're a technology company, a software implement implementation company, we're just looking for partners around the world. And that's how we maintain these amazing clients and be able to attain you know, government bodies in Argentina. For myself personally, I don't even speak Spanish. There's no way we'd work with the Argentinian government if it wasn't for our partners Polaris down in Argentina. So it's all about partnerships, all about growth. Uh, so if you're looking to grow, if you're looking to digitalize your effort for your supply chain, chain, then please reach out to reach out to myself or reach out to the team. Uh, reach out to Morpheus Network. We're looking for partners all around the world. Thank you so much for that great question. Thanks so much, Dan. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Up next, I'm excited to introduce our last startup presentation before intermission. Bidme is an online marketplace that quickly connects homeowners and contractors for home improvement projects and guarantees payment security for each party by holding payments in trust. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John, and I'm proud to represent Bidme, the ultimate solution for finding, hiring, and paying contractors securely and efficiently. 69% of homeowners struggle to find a contractor they can rely on. This is because 5% of projects end with a stolen deposit. Contractors themselves face numerous challenges, including an astonishing 80% spending a substantial portion of their work week chasing payments on invoices for work that has already been completed. Clearly, the renovation market is fragmented and inefficient. The available solutions are horizontal and difficult to implement. The solution is an automated renovation marketplace with money held in trust. This allows homeowners to get multiple bids from contractors without all of the traditional legwork. We believe in speeding up the time to trust, and we achieve this by holding payments and only allowing for purchase verified ratings and reviews, complete with before and after photos and homeowner comments. But we wanted to create a platform that benefits contractors as well. With BidMe, contractors can grow their businesses without having to pay per lead, making our platform a cost-effective and efficient solution for them as well. The market we're addressing is massive, with a valuation of over $300 billion per year across Canada and the US, specifically in the residential renovation market. What's more exciting is that this market is growing at 5% compound annual growth. The best part about BidMe is its simplicity. We've designed our platform to be intuitive and user-friendly, with a straightforward process that benefits both homeowners and contractors. Step one provide a title, and let our AI integrations help you flush out some of the more nuanced details. Take a few photos, and you're all set. Contractors ask questions, request site visits, and when they have enough information, place bids on your job. Step two, choose a contractor based on purchase verified ratings and reviews. Once you've approved a contractor's bid, we hold on to your money, and the contractor can get started without the fear of not being paid when the work is completed. Step three, the contractor will have already provided photos of the completed work, and you can provide your feedback. With these reviews, our platform gets stronger and more valuable with every project that's completed. We deliver value to our users with a freemium model, with our main source of revenue coming from a recently relaunched four-tier contractor subscription that provides customization and flexibility with pricing ranging from free to over $1,300 per month. We were cash conservative before it was cool, but this focus was based on driving user satisfaction and long-term sustainability, thereby creating increased value for our users, investors, and partner alike. To drive adoption, we've prioritized low-cost sustainable partnerships. These include Scott McGilvery's endorsement and the funding round he led, home show engagements, preferred contractor programs, and growth partnerships. These collaborations expand our reach and add value to our platform. We also prioritize public relations as a cost-effective approach to increasing market adoption. Our consistent stream of news has boosted our domain ranking for organic search and raised brand awareness. Co-branded contractor merchandise has effectively driven word-of-mouth adoption. We've been acknowledged as industry leaders through media coverage and industry awards, including being named a top 100 tech company to watch by Founders Beta two years in a row, and awarded third place for product of the year by the Canadian Construction Association in 2022. In the highly competitive market that we operate in, our strategy is to stand out by being the platform that consistently delivers exceptional customer satisfaction, providing our users with precisely what they require while eliminating anything redundant. We take pride in our ability to provide our services at an affordable price point, ensuring accessibility to all, regardless of budget constraints. 
BIDME's competitive advantages include scalability and automation, resulting in operational efficiency and low overhead with a minimal burn rate. Strategic partnerships with well-known and respected organizations generate low-cost leads and increase brand awareness. Last, our memorable brand identity quickly communicates our approachability, established reputation, personability, and trustworthiness to both homeowners and contractors, building trust and loyalty with our users. I'm proud to introduce our incredible team. It is small, it is mighty, and together with our homeowner and contractor users, we are going to be taking over the world of residential renovations. I feel particularly lucky to be working with Philip, our CTO and co-founder, who is the best technical lead I've ever had the pleasure of working with. We obviously have a ton of exceptional testimonials. However, the best feedback is when a user asks if they can invest. Earlier this year, we answered that question and subsequently launched a small crowdfunding campaign for our users, which surpassed expectations by being oversubscribed by 40%, which is perhaps the best user feedback you can get. Regarding our future plans and strategic roadmap, we aim to continuously enhance our software as a service product, both in terms of functionality and usability, as well as tracking and recognizing user patterns within the funnel. This iterative process will likely take around four months to ensure the repeatability and reliability of our product. Additionally, we are committed to further automating our platform with the goal of achieving full automation, including customized user experiences and user feedback within the next two to three iterations. Furthermore, we are delighted to announce that we will be partnering with the Government of Canada, specifically the consulate in Boston, over the next eight months to prepare us for expansion into the U.S. market. The consulate has graciously offered material support in order to establish many of the same channel partnerships we have in Canada, and we are thrilled to embark on this exciting new chapter of our growth story. Once we have finalized our SaaS product, and before we embark on our southern expansion, we intend to initiate a new round of funding. If you share our vision and would like to join us, please do not hesitate to contact me at the email address below, jc at bidme.com. Thank you. Thank you, John. Great work. The audience wants to know, all of your competitors have a pay per lead or commission model. At what point do you change to that model as well? That is a really good question. Bidme has consciously decided not to adopt the pay per lead model that is prevalent in the industry. We understand that this model is often the go-to for many companies who are looking to quickly monetize, but we firmly believe that this results in a subpar experience for both the homeowner and the contractor. Under the pay per lead model, the homeowner's information is sold multiple times, leading to a flood of calls and emails and, and outreach from the contractors that are trying to recoup their investment. And rather than taking the time to understand a project uh, appropriately, it's basically speed, right? How quickly can I close this deal? Uh, at BidMe, we prioritize our customer satisfaction above everything else. And it's why we hold funds in trust. It's why we utilize the efficient bid system uh, that protects the homeowner and the contractor and, affers and you know, ensures that the contractor is compensated uh, appropriately. Um, you know, this system removes that pressure and, and allows everybody to, to work together in a very collaborative environment. And that's something we're, we're really proud of. Thank you again. Hey, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. So with that, we've reached the halfway point of today's demo day. A sincere thanks and congratulations to our six founders we've heard from so far. I hope you're all as inspired and excited as I am. Before we dive into the second half, let's take a look back at the last 10 weeks with our founding teams. So sit back and enjoy. After the five minute intermission, we will hear from the remaining six companies. Hello, everyone. On behalf of myself and our Google team here, welcome. We are so excited to be kicking off our fourth Google for Startups Accelerator Canada cohort with all of you. We are thrilled that you have chosen our program to help enable growth for your companies. So a huge thanks to all of you for your time, energy, passion, and enthusiasm. This has been months in the making, and we absolutely cannot wait to dive in with all of you.
our startup is BidMe, um, and our goal is revolutionizing the uh, residential renovation space. Our startup is called SalonScale. Um, our goal is to enhance um, transparency through the supply chain. Our startup uh, is, of course, Morpheus Network. We're a supply chain automation platform. Our goal, of course, is to optimize global trade. Our startup is an all-in-one design, visualization, and business tool platform. Our startup is my choice. Um, we're an insurance aggregator. Uh, basically, we partner with uh, insurance brokers, companies, and uh, direct writers to you know, provide our users the best possible rate on their car insurance. By Chain Money, we're building a payment and commerce infrastructure that connects multiple currencies and multiple payment types. Our goal is to make the gig economy work better for gig workers. So we're um, both a financial services platform for gig workers in the US, uh, but also um, sort of aspiring to become more of a labor aggregator or digital union of sorts for gig workers in the gig economy. Our startup is focused. We are making MRI faster. Typically, MRI scans take about 30 to 60 minutes. We bring it down to less than five minutes. Sharewares is a clean tech company. We've launched a reusable uh, borrowing platform at Citywide in Vancouver right now for, for cups and takeout containers. Now we're trying to end the world's reliance on, on single use. Uh, we empower property managers to uh, uh, drive revenue with innovative solutions to boost value and profitability. We're helping restaurants to build a better sustainable businesses uh, by enabling them to monetize their valuable real estate for the first time. We're building uh, a platform and solution for enterprises to stress test uh, AI and ML models uh, to really test the confidence boundaries of their models so that we can surface vulnerabilities uh, around the performance, security, um, and, and general performance of their models. We kick off the program by developing bespoke OKRs or goals for each startup team. It really takes the village to do what we do. I always say like we are so fortunate um, to work alongside an amazing group of Google volunteers. From there, we dive deep into product and design UX. You want to prototype early, as early as you can, so you can fail faster. It doesn't mean that failure is good, it just means if you do it earlier, at least you have more time to fix it. Next, we dedicate two weeks to technical infrastructure across cloud, AI, machine learning, and so much more. I prefer to think about it as a, a two-dimensional scale. And one is on how automated you are, and the other is how much user control you have and you can maximize both of those. The next stop is Growth Week, focused on digital marketing, brand building, and sales strategy. The reason we talk about click-through rate is because of relevance. If your click-through rate is higher, you can automatically assume that your ad copy, uh, your keyword strategy, all of it is actually relevant to the consumer search query. Our content concludes with all things people in leadership. And then in week 10, we take a moment to celebrate with a demo day and graduation. Hello everyone, congratulations to you all and thank you for joining our fourth Google for Startups Accelerator. I love the opportunity to connect with all of you a month or so ago and left inspired by the energy and all of your ambition. We're incredibly excited for the work you're doing now and will continue to do across Canada and beyond and we can't wait to see what's next. Congratulations team, we made it. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure working with each of you over the last 10 weeks. Congratulations. Welcome back. I always love taking a look back at what our startup teams have been up to during their time with us. As I said at the beginning of today's demo day, it's been productive and busy. So up next, we'll be hearing from My Choice, a Toronto, Ontario-based insurance aggregator that partners with insurance companies and brokerages to bring customers the power of choice and transparency. Hey everyone, my name is Aaron Merzayan. I'm one of the founders of MyChoice. Uh, MyChoice is an insurance aggregator that takes the pain out of shopping for insurance by giving Canadians the power to choose between talking to a broker if they want a more personal touch or having the convenience of buying online from a direct insurer. 
So we're on a mission to help save Canadians a billion dollars on their insurance. And today I want to give you a glimpse under the hood and discuss how we're going to achieve our goal. So there's this large misconception by Canadian drivers about this mythical cheap insurance company. Uh, when a friend says to us that the rate is cheap with a certain company, we tend to think it's going to be cheap for us as well. The reality is uh, that each insurance provider has different ways that they're measuring risk. So what works for your friend may not be what works for you. Uh, drivers are also very frustrated with the lack of choice, transparency, and the bait and switch nature of shopping online, and of course the high rates. Uh, that's why according to the most recent Ernst & Young study, only 18% of can Canadians are using rate comparison websites when uh, purchasing their insurance products. This is compared to about 70% in the UK where you have multiple publicly traded rate comparison sites with a relatively comparative, uh, comparable population size in the UK. We think we're on the cusp of something huge as our assumption here is that the environment of rate hikes and inflation is gonna create a snowball effect and accelerate the growth of Canadians comparing more uh, and eventually close this gap uh, between places like the UK and the US uh, with us. Um, our goal is to unite both direct insurers and brokers in one place and give users more choice and uncomplicated information. And that's gonna lead to better decision-making and ultimately more savings. We act as a trusted partner for those looking to grow their brokerage from a policy or a technology perspective, or for direct insurers looking for some gains in the market share in a predictable and profitable way. We don't own or operate a brokerage as a part of our company, and we're not financially affiliated with any insurers. And because of this, we have no bias in matching users with the right insurance partner for their needs at the best price. Uh, so let's see how all this works in the car insurance space, for example. Users are coming to our site, they're entering their postal code to get started. And next, we're collecting a little bit of information about your car. And then we collect a, a bit of a mini a micro autobiography for your uh, history of a, as a driver. And during this process, which can be quite painful usually, we help our users by automating the process along the way and pre-populating whatever fields that we can. And the last step is pretty much the fun part where you'll get to select discounts that you're going to apply. And uh, then our matching algorithm gets to work while we scan the market and give you your best rates. You'll then have the ability to talk to a broker or buy online, depending on the insurer. And this process is actually taking our users an average of three minutes to complete. And it's the reason why our forum converts at about 56% by, uh, for start to finish. This has led to a fantastic year of organic growth for my choice amidst the backdrop of inflation and rising rates. And saving money has never been more top of mind for Canadians. Our growth numbers actually show that. Uh, our monthly users have grown by 126% year over year. And yes, that translates into revenue growth as well. And uh, being an effective partner for driving effective and efficient CPAs for our insurance partners is really what we do well. And anyone that's experienced in the space knows that it's all about customer acquisition costs and CPAs. And with the help of word of mouth and search engines, around 70% of our users are now coming to our site organically, which help us, helps us keep our CAC drastically low. We're also proud to say that users that switch over uh, using my choice save an average of about 23%. We have an awesome team that's helped us accomplish all of this under myself and Matt's leadership. He is my co-founder, absolutely love working with the guy, going on about six years strong as we worked together before my choice. We really have a complimentary skill set and uh, we have the right mix of technology and marketing work experience with some of the best known brands in Canada from our time as marketing executives. And this dynamic's proven to work really well as we've been able to enter one of the most competitive verticals and grow profitably. So talking about the future with our motto of unbiased choice and transparency, we have so many exciting things to look forward to. Our home insurance product recently launched and we're really happy about that. Our life insurance product is launching at the end of Q2 and we're really excited to enter that space. We have a host of tools coming out uh, that are also designed for transparency. One of them is going to be utilizing uh, some public rate change data to give users an instant way to know how much their rate has gone up or down, believe it or not. Uh, some companies have dropped rates in the last five years for their particular insurer. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, we've been bitten by the AI bug like a lot of other startups, and we're working on something very special for the insurance market, essentially a co-pilot and a power user for my choice that will help users with specific questions about their policies and rates on the site using actual data uh, with the appropriate safety guardrails in place so that they can, um, they can be as informed as possible going into the insurance buying process. And that's pretty much it. So if you're interested in diving deeper into our company, finding out what we're up to, and more importantly, the team that's making all of the magic happen, feel free to reach out to me at rn at mychoice.ca, and I would love to set up a time to chat. Thanks. So a question from the audience. There seems to be a lot of comparison sites when we Google for car insurance. What differentiates you from the competition? Yeah, uh, so there is indeed a lot of sites that uh, compare insurance quotes, and this goes back to the lack of education piece a little bit. The common insurance shopper isn't really able to discern a broker from a direct writer and sometimes even aggregators. So you often are hearing people say that a brokerage's name when you ask them what insurance company they're with. Uh, so when they see sites that mention comparing rates online, it's usually brokerages. And on the other hand, the very basic definition of a uh, direct insurer is that they don't work with brokerages as they're direct to consumer. And then aggregators are meant to bring together direct insurers and brokerages in one place. And what makes us different from the other two large aggregators in Canada is we don't own or operate a brokerage and hold no recurring stake in any user's insurance policy. And because of this, our goal to match users with both brokerages and direct insurers at the best price for their specific needs is truly unbiased. And all of our stuff is expertly reviewed by licensed professionals, and we partner with the best brokerages and providers, so we have all our bases covered there. Um, to be specific, there's no other service in, in the country in our particularly unique position. Thanks so much, team. Up next, we'll be hearing from Tables. Based in Ottawa, Ontario, Tables is a 3D booking platform that lets diners upgrade to the seat of their preference while generating net new profit for restaurants. Hi, my name is Fraser Nagy. I'm CEO and co-founder of Tables. And I'd like, just like to start off by thanking everyone for having us participate in this program. I know on behalf of my co-founders, uh, Jerome St. Hilaire, Andre Sakic, and Steph Scrivens, we've really enjoyed the programming and, and we're really enthused to have participated so thank you again for having us and as well as meeting a lot of the other fantastic founders of, of some incredible companies. Um, we've had a great time. And for those of us listening live to this, hello to ourselves uh, over over on uh, in the real world there. Um, so uh, Tables on to something really, really extraordinary. So for any of you foodies out there, those that love going to great restaurants or for any of those that you you know, you can admit it yourself or um, you know, you have a, a mom or a partner that are very, very picky about where they want to sit. Well, Tables is for you. Um, what you're seeing right here is one of our restaurant partners in, in, in Phoenix, part of the flagship hospitality group, which has properties across the U.S., all different shapes and sizes from this really beautiful sort of lounge patio restaurant filled with plants and very colorful Instagram worthy food and cocktails, um, all the way to a cool boogie nights uh, bowling alley. Um, so, you know, restaurants have gone to great lengths to create these really unique spaces and have spent tons of money creating these experiences. And yet, what do they make you do? Whether it's on their website, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's through Open Table directly, well, guess what? Um, they make you go to this classic reservation widget. And for 25 years, uh, actually this birthday this year, July 2nd, um, we've had the same widget, be it Open Table, be it Resi, be it Seven Rooms, any of the systems that have come in have just replicated this model. So what Tables has done is really looked at guest services from the very beginning from the minute you start engaging with your booking process. So just above, we were sort of teasing it there. Well, we have created a whole new way where you can interact with these spaces, with these brands, and then ultimately make your booking. So what I'm gonna do here is I, of course, could click into that graphic, but what I did is I clicked on reserve now. And what this does is for the first time ever, takes you to this new, uh, new way of navigating. Think of course of, of airline industry, uh, first class comfort plus, think of courtside tickets at our, a Raptors game or going to the ballet and getting that really cool uh, box booth up, up, up in the gallery. So, you know, we, from hotels to Ubers to sports and everything in between, um, every industry has figured out a form of what's called revenue management themselves. And that's a combination of premium seating and dynamic pricing. And for us in the restaurant industry, well, we haven't, we're the last of the party. 
So we, all of our partners now are able to provide this, this new experience of enabling uh, guests to have that choice in the matter. Um, you know, I can take you through this uh, traditional booking flow, which I'll show uh, maybe in a second, but really what's so incredible about tables is the fact that we have 3D mapped these spaces and guests can now walk through here and experience these dining rooms in a way that they've never done before in the past. Um, incredibly beautiful. Uh, and whether you want a little two top next to a fountain or you know a booth inside, well, now you're able to make that choice yourself, either by clicking on, on the available tables or selecting down some of our tiles here. We work with the partners to curate um, the, the best spaces for you to sit. And, and this has been received as you can imagine. And I hope you guys are you know, in the audience grinning and smiling and, and, and hoping this will come to your, your favorite restaurant because it's a pretty incredible experience from there. Um, the economic model on this is, is very exciting as well. Not only is this incredible experience for, for guests, but the, for the operator, it's, it's huge as well. Palm actually chooses to price every single table. It's their peak right now in Phoenix for anyone going down there on a bachelor party or a golf trip or going going to see a game it's a big time big time of the year for them but traditionally we also recommend restaurants to actually uh, use free seatings at 4 or 5 p.m um or, or uh, off peak times and that's the key to the model almost 40 percent of our tables are free and, and booking times but at those prime times at seven o'clock traditionally you know we want restaurants have to join this economic revolution of looking at their real estate differently um, so in this, you'd pay that $20, you'd secure the seat, and we actually take that reservation and put it right into open table for them. So we act as a digital concierge for the guest and, a, and sort of a brokerage concierge in the back for the restaurants. But what's so significant here is that $20 means a lot different for the restaurant traditionally than just buying you know, a bottle of wine because there's no cost of goods associated. Um, and this means that $20 is worth a lot, lot more. So you know whether it's this beautiful, um, you know, patio to maybe one of the best views in Manhattan. We work with all sorts of different properties and and customize this experience to that and to their customers. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for for taking the time here to to learn about tables. And we're again so happy to be a part of this program. Uh, we're live now from Toronto to Chicago, Miami, you, you name it, and, and of course New York and and, and other markets. So. Uh, you know, we really encourage you to, to, for anyone who has great introductions to two great hospitality partners, uh, we're growing across North America and anyone that knows of a great dining room, a great general manager, a great owner, uh, please, please let us know. Thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to hanging out with all of you uh, later today. Such a unique way to book reservations at my favorite restaurants. Thank you again. So a question for you. When you say there are no costs of goods associated with the booking fee, what does that mean to an operator? Great question. I briefly touched on this in the presentation, but if you think of the way restaurants look at their economics, um, not only, of course, does top line revenue matter or revenue matter, but, you know, they really great operators look at everything in terms of unit economics. So, you know, you often hear this concept of cost of goods in restaurants, that bottle of wine is 40% cost of good labors at 50%, you know, these, these crazy numbers, and especially through uh, this inflationary period and labor shortage where restaurants are, are more set on this than ever. Uh, traditionally, restaurants really target this, this notion of 10%. And there's sort of a bit of a laugh in the industry. Where did that number even come from? Why is it this, this 10%? But um, so with restaurants that range anywhere from 3% to 5%, so, you know, great operators can do 12, 15%. That means if you go for dinner and you spend $100, where that operator might only be walking away with $10 or $5 in true profit. So when you upgrade that table for $20, well, that it, there's no cost of goods on that. So if they were only making $5 beforehand and now they're making $20 on that upgrade, that's a not just a 2x, 3x, that can be a 4x shift in profitability. And tables just shares of that upside. So we take 30% of that uptick. So even if they're walking away with 15, well, that's a massive shift in their economics. And a subset of their tables, 20% of those tables, for example, the restaurant can shift the total profitability of the whole restaurant. So great question. Thank you again, team. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. This, is, this has been wonderful. And, and again, thanks from, from myself and the rest of the team at Tables. So next, we'll be turning it over to Grid, a Winnipeg, Manitoba prop tech company committed to driving property tech forward. Josh, take it away. Hi there, my name is uh, Josh Glow and I'm co-founder at Grid, a prop tech company based in Canada, operating across North America. 
So since 2015, Grid has focused on empowering the multifamily real estate sector with forward-thinking prop tech solutions. We have an active working relationship with more than 25% of the Canadian multifamily sector. Uh, and we've also started our rapid expansion into the US. So Grid's comprised of three different divisions. We have Grid Digital, where we create 3D media and immersive tech solutions designed to help property managers attract qualified tenants and increase their marketing power. We have Grid Rent, which was Canada's first immersive apartment search platform. Uh, we launched that in 2016. And our newest venture, Grid Park, uh, it's a prop tech and parking product uh, built for real estate. We're gonna be focusing on the Grid Park side today. So our problem, uh, our problem is multifaceted. Uh, there are eight parking spaces for every car in North America, yet a parking shortage still exists. It's crazy. Too many times you find yourself circling the block, uh, looking for parking spaces, and you'll see full lots vacant, and all you see is 24 seven reserved signage. We uncovered a massive problem that we don't think has any solution. There's no one connecting the dots. And uh, so we started speaking to our relationships with our property management clients, and you talk to most large property managers in North America, you're talking multi-billion dollar portfolios, and they can't tell you how many parking spots they have. They can't tell you their parking vacancy rate. And even sometimes they can't tell you the revenue they generate for each, each stall, let alone the vacancy. So this is a huge issue. There's, there's no centralized system to manage or control parking spots, which leads to poor utilization, lost revenue, and then lost building value. So we built one. Grid Park is a suite of parking technology built to drive efficiency, asset value, and profitability for property managers. So we have two products within the Grid Park suite. We have our backend software, which we call Lot Management, which empowers property managers to, managers to take control of their parking in-house. It increases their operational oversight uh, over their own parking assets, boosts their ops efficiency, and provides an opportunity to actually capture lost revenue, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, so some features around this product line, as you can see on the screen, it, it integrates with their existing CRM uh, or property management software uh, for live up-to-date data, which feeds into an analytics dashboard that provides uh, visibility of their assets in real time, which they've never had access to before. An interactive map and then also an enforcement application so that they can put controls in place for a fair user experience around their assets. Once onboarded, we then take them to and optimize their portfolio with the marketplace. So the marketplace we call the Airbnb of parking. The marketplace basically connects the dots between underutilized parking spaces nested within the property management industry and parkers in high demand areas searching for parking. Through our proprietary app, our vetted use, uh, our vetted base of, of drivers and, and parkers can reserve hourly, daily and monthly parking at 25% below market averages. Our elevated app experience uh, enables flexible booking. Uh, it enables users to book three weeks in advance if they know they're going to a sports function or something. Uh, book customized monthly parking for you know that post-COVID flexible uh, work schedule. Um, and all the revenue from this generated goes straight to the bottom of the line of the portfolio. It's, it's a true win-win. And uh, there's estimates that the Canadian parking sector alone is a $32 billion industry. And so the number comes from Stats Canada, where a quarter of all Canadians' car expenditures are parking related. And in Canada alone, there's 5 million uh, multifamily parking spaces. And so, you know, while we're focused on those 5 million and sort of unlocking them for the, for the public, uh, we, we are open and have built solutions for the remaining 85 million-ish parking slots in, in the rest of Canada. The market's virtually untouched. We have a clear first mover advantage with this three-sided marketplace, the combination of our software and the marketplace product. And uh, the past couple of years have been really exciting. We completed our first seed round last year. We've been lucky and fortunate not to uh, have to raise too much capital since Grid Digital is, is, is well past the startup phase. Um, near 900% growth in the last four years with 180% uh, kegger. Uh, and federal and provincial uh, government support and backing, which has been great. Uh, we, we truly believe we have a defensible business with the three-sided marketplace. Uh, so the team, along with our high-performing leadership team shown on the screen, we have 33 employees, uh, 100 plus contractors and, and dozens of partnerships. And uh, we also have a team of trusted and experienced advisors that form a steering committee that meets monthly sort of below the board level. 
So we're forward thinking on next steps. Uh, I mean, we're always seeking advice, mentorship. We want to, we're, we're here to learn uh, from successful advisors, business leaders in our community in, in, in Canada and the States. Um, and we're looking to accelerate our growth via referrals, connections. Um, we will be facilitating a series A likely early in 2024. And we'd love to start establishing some connections and relationships uh, uh, around that. I want to thank everyone for the time. Uh, I'm happy to take questions live. Uh, and my email address is also at the bottom left of the screen if you prefer to take it offline. Thank you. So Josh, what are the most important strategic initiatives for the next 12 months? Great question. Uh, I would say the answer is traction. Um, we have the product in a really great spot right now on the grid park side and, and have early signs of a strong product market fit. Um, so. You know, we're, we're talking about plans to scale this thing across Canada very rapidly this year um, and begin prepping for our U.S. expansion. And so those relationships, uh, the way we structure the company is that Grid Digital is paving the way uh, relationships wise through the industry, establishing these long term relationships that can then be referred into the Grid Park division um, and uh, and allow us to uh, continue our expansion. Wonderful. Thank you again. Thanks so much. Now, I'd love to introduce Chi Money. Based in Toronto, Ontario, Chi Money enables businesses to send payments to phones, emails, and Twitter, regardless of scale, currency, country, and other factors. Hi, my name is Uchi, Uchi as in Gucci. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me. I live in Toronto, but I'm originally from Nigeria. And before Chi Money, I worked across product and engineering at Shopify IBM and RBC, but I'm a big foodie. I, lo I like enjoying food and I have this long life mission to try all of the restaurants in Toronto. But more than being a foodie, I'm the founder and CEO of Chi Money. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, Chi Money and why Chi Money exists. In 2020, I used to run a community of 30,000 people across Africa, the US and Canada. So we created this community to unlock and provide jobs and tech opportunities for people of African descent. But one of the big challenges that kept recurring was just how hard it is to send payments to everyone across multiple countries. So I created Chi Money to solve this payment challenge and make it possible to send payments to anyone, just like, as, it's just like sending an email. So Chi Money today, enables value to move to anyone in the world. And Chi Money is like Interact, but Interact that works for any country and any currency. Today, Chi Money is building a network of payment networks for enterprises and for developers. And our mission is to unlock economic opportunities for everyone. I know you might be wondering that payments and FinTech, it's a solved problem and that the market is very saturated. But if you've ever tried to send payments to a large group of people or a gift internationally, you will know that is not true, right? It's very, very frustrating because outside of PayPal or banks, there are virtually no way to send this kind of payments. And existing options like bank uh, and PayPal don't work for all countries. And they need you to know the bank details or payment information of each and everyone you want to send those payments to. I mean, for enterprises, this can be a pain since they have to send payments to thousands of people on a regular basis. In fact, it takes them about seven days to collect those payment information and process uh, those payments. So these enterprises are the people that Chi Money are targeting. So far, Chi Money has been able to connect a payment between currencies, countries, asset types, and ledger types. And we're transforming the process or sending payouts globally from a painful seven days to just a few seconds. So far, we've connected to banks in 40 countries, we've integrated gift cards, bill payments, and more options. And compared to existing solutions, Chi Money is very superior. Our vision is to be the platform that connects anything to everything and anywhere to everywhere. And what makes Chi Money special it's not just the ability to send payment. What makes us special is the fact that Chimon is able to add new payment trails, new payment options, and new payment flows with the click of a button. And this unlocks value for us 
and for the partners that we that we work with. One of our products called Chipay, it's super easy to use. In three steps, you can send payments to anyone in the world. So you just have to enter the email of everyone you want to send payments to, select the amount you want to send, click pay, and instantly payment goes out to everyone. And then you can pick how they want to cash out uh, that payment. And this problem we're solving has already been validated because Google, Microsoft, and the rest of them use Chew Money for payouts across the world. Chew Money is just about a year old. And so far, we've been able to grow user accounts by 600%. For transaction value, we've been able to grow it by 45 times. And more people are using Chew Money today. And we're super pumped about the future of Chew Money. So our team is very experienced in this space and we're committed to moving very fast to grow revenue and ultimately unlock value for all. We're super pumped about our roadmap and we'd love to invite you to join us on this journey to make a value move. We're really looking forward to keeping in touch with everyone and hearing your feedback when you try Chi Money. Uchi. How can folks use Chi Money to provide flexible rewards to their team in Canada or other countries? Thank you. Sending rewards with Chi Money, it's super easy. You can send rewards to the employee's email, and you even have the option to enter a personalized message. And for the employees, they receive a reward that they actually want to use and love. They can cash out to thousands of unique gift card options like Amazon, Spotify, and things like that. And they can even receive the reward in their bank account, regardless of where they are based in the world. So Chi Money makes it possible to reward employees in a flexible way with a reward that they actually love and they will remember. And uh, we, we hope that you get to try Chi Money for employee rewards in Canada, especially if you have remote team members that are distributed. Thank you. Thank you again. Great work. Thanks for having me, Iran. It was a great session. All right, so we have two more presentations. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Focus Technologies, an AI IQ Toronto-based technology company that designs and develops software solutions to enhance the speed and quality of MRI scans. Hello, my name is Sadek Raisi. My background is in quantum computing and machine learning. I have a PhD from the University of Waterloo in quantum computing. I've been doing quantum technologies for more than 15 years now. A few years ago, we invented this quantum algorithm that we realized would have applications for medical imaging and MRI. MRI is the gold standard of medical imaging. It's extremely popular because it's a non-invasive technique in contrast to CT scans and PET scans. And also the level of details you get from MRI is not matched by any other modality. But there is an access issue for MRI. MRIs usually take about 30 to 60 minutes. This limits the access for large groups of people, people with claustrophobia, kids, or elderly people with Parkinson. It also limits the number of people who can use MRI per unit of time. Typically about one and a half to two patients can go through MRI per, per hour. This leads to really long wait times. In Canada right now, the wait time is more than four months. And in the US, it's about four weeks. It also leads to really expensive scans. Putting all of these together, we get at this crazy number. Only 10% of the world population has access to MRI. The first time I saw this number, I could not believe my eyes. This is just not acceptable. We're bringing down MRI scan time to less than five minutes. With a five minute scan, we can increase the throughput to four to five patients per hour. This would reduce this wait time and also would make this a lot more cost effective. The challenge with reducing a scan time is that you lose quality. This is a, this is a signal we get from a five minutes MRI scan. We're building a software that combines different techniques from machine learning and quantum technologies to enhance that. The first element is a quantum signal booster, which amplifies the signal. The second element gets rid of the background noise. So you get basically the signal to noise ratio that you would get from a long scan. We combine this with a more efficient signal processing, and we can bring down the 60 minute scan time to less than five minutes without compromising the quality. Here I'm showing two images that are practically identical. The only difference is that the one on the left 
is generated from a scan that is four times faster, but the qualities are, are the same. This means that we can get the same quality with a scan that is four times faster. We're targeting MRI clinics and hospitals. Our software would enable them to do at least four more scans per day, which would increase their monthly revenue by at least 35K. We're charging 10K per month for the subscription to our software. To put this into perspective, there are 50,000 operational MRI units around the world. If you do the math, 10K times 12 times the number of units, the total addressable market is 6 billion. We're focusing on North American market, which is about one third of this. And we're projecting the obtainable market to be 5% of this, which is 330 million in recurring revenue annually. We also expect to get to profitability by 2025. And this is the team behind our magic. Mikhail Moska is my co-founder. He's one of the pioneers of quantum technologies. Funny story about him is that they, they did the first implementation of a quantum algorithm back when he was in Oxford. And they use a technology that is, is practically the same as MRI for that. We raised about 950K in VC funding, more than 500K in grant money. And our burn rate right now is about 40K per month. And our runway is about 20 months. We're raising 5 million, and this is to extend our runway for about 18 months to do more pilots in clinical testing, go through the FDA process, and gain some traction with our early adopters. We have two patents. We're starting a pilot with Humber River Hospital. We have raised about 950K in VC funding and more than 500K in undiluted funding, and we've had support from all of these great partners. A question from our viewers. Do you need any regulatory clearance for commercialization of your product? Great question. Um, yeah, so our product falls under software as a medical device, and we need to go through the regulatory process for that. In the US, this is the FDA, and we need to get a class 2, 5, 10K clearance for our product. In Canada, that's Health Canada. Thank you for the presentation and for answering the question. Thanks so much for having me. Well, everyone, we have reached our final presenter. Last but certainly not least, I'm thrilled to introduce Alicia, founder of Salon Scale. Based in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Salon Scale is the salon industry's leading B2B SaaS provider in professional goods management. Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Suley, founder and CEO of Salon Scale Technology. So let's start off with the mission. So our mission at Salon Scale is to create an ecosystem of profitable salons around the world. Now, why this matters to me? Well, our company was really founded in, in our roots. The, the experience of being a salon owner myself has made me figure out one of the biggest industry flaws. So as a salon owner myself, I've worked as a solopreneur, a salon owner with staff, and I felt that every year business was going good. We were growing, but I kept having the same problem that many brick and mortars, many small businesses find, which is we were not profiting as much as we should. So that forced me to start focusing on my business than working in it. And when I did this, I realized one of the biggest industry flaws. And that problem is that the salon industry has never had a digital solution to track the cost of goods. So when we think about that, and I started to dig into other sectors, I started to look at people of trade. So when we look at mechanics, plumbers, electricians, uh, they were simply separating their parts from their labor. And this was a way for them to control their variable expenses. When we look at also modern day businesses, such as frozen yogurt, ice cream places, uh, they are simply charging by weight to make sure that they allocate their pricing to the actual variable parts um, that they are using. Now, that made me have my light bulb moment and that made me think, why are we not doing this with hair color? Why are we not separating our parts from our labor, ensuring that the variable part of the service is always paid for? Now, this solution is needed now more than ever because the pandemic has created a mass amount of inflation in the salon sector. And salons are seeing an 18% increase in their supply costs cost alone. So our solution is an all-in-one platform. It is a mobile app paired with a web dashboard. It allows salons and stylists to weigh, charge, track, and order for the exact amount of products leaving their back bar. Now, 
we work pretty simple. So a salon can use the tablet um, and or mobile device. They simply put their formulations in. They can use the Bluetooth uh, device or they can manually put in the actual formula and it tells them the exact cost. So now that they have the transparency at their back bar, they know exactly what it costs them, whether it's foils, gloves, treatments, toners, even coffee, whatever the cost of goods wa was, in real time, that will tell them what it was per session. Now, instead of having this lagging indicator, they now have a leading one. They're now able to charge the consumer for the exact amount of product being used in the session to make sure that there is no cash flow loss um, after that appointment has been done. So all of that information gets sent to their web dashboard in which they can get more insights to maximize their profitability by controlling their expenses. So that comes into our automatic ordering system, being able to give salons uh, with a click of a button instantly what they need to order that is a just in the industry's first just-in-time ordering system. Now, this is a proven method and it's worked. So in the matter of five years, we are actually putting our mission to work. And we've seen over $50,000 on average of profit put back into these salons, using us to, again, increase the revenue, putting on that cost of goods to, to the ticket to transact, as well as controlling their expenses on the back end. So we are seeing about a 5 to 8% boost to their bottom line. Now, when we look at our traction and where we have hit as a business ourselves, we're sitting at about 2.2 million of annual recurring revenue, over 10,000 daily active colorists, um, over 3,376 locations, uh, predominantly in North America, and we are uh, maintaining a 2% churn rate. So that is all based off our financial modeling. So we offer two subscription types. So whether they're a solopreneur or a team, a multi-stylist with a team, uh, we offer a $29 or $99 a monthly subscription. But what we've done is we bundled our add-ons all in to an all-in rate in which a solo would pay $375, salon paying $899. Currently about 41% of our customers go all in and choose that annual upfront cost. Now, this is a market opportunity of $1.1 billion based off that last financial modeling. Um, and we have about 1.5 million registered salons. And how we go to market, how we get these and attain these customers, well, we still are experiencing about 27% of our customers that are word of mouth because our branding really helps spread the movement. It is a movement, um, Salon Skills helping salons again get profits, and that's where we're, we're experiencing that word of mouth traction. And the rest of the markets all are strategic in the digital uh, digital marketing um, area. So with our digital ads, we're experiencing about 32% acquisition there, 25% through influencer strategies, and 16% through strategic sponsorships. So getting returns on all funnels, we're seeing that here. Now, I am not doing this alone, so we do have a team behind us. So 23 salon scalers are on this mission with over 35 years of salon ownership experience all combined. That with an understanding of technical SaaS and how to scale out our organization. Now, what is next? So we started with this cost calculator that built this platform that allows these salons to be able to weigh, charge, and track and order. Now the next phase is, is automation. So how do we connect the supply to the manufacturer? So that is really what we've actually stumbled upon, a much bigger problem. So with the bullwhip effect in the salon industry, with not having data to be able to streamline ordering, we now are able to to fix this gap and, and to automate the actual supply. So with our strategic partnerships coming in play with Square being able to help us with the transaction and uh, L'Oreal and Salon Centric to help us with the supply, we're now gonna bring automation to the back bar of salons all around the world. So that is Salon Scale and I'm happy to connect with each and every one of you. Thank you. Alicia, does Salon Scale have any plans to expand beyond North America? Thanks for the question. Yeah, I believe our focus right now is heavily on the North American market. We want to dominate that market first before we expand into other global markets. But, you know, back bar issues are a global problem. And we are confident that once we become the industry's choice in North America, an expansion into the global markets is just an easy next step. Thank you again, Alicia. That was a great way to wrap up our demo day. Amazing. Thank you so much. Well, folks, that concludes our demo day. On behalf of myself, Google, and everyone who made this program possible, a sincere thank you. 
Thank you to our 12 Canadian startups and the outstanding teams behind them. It has been a true pleasure working with all of you. And thank you for participating in our fourth Google for Startups Accelerator Canada class. And congratulations on a truly outstanding demo day. Thank you to the dozens of speakers and mentors who graciously lent their time, passion, and expertise to the program. And thank you to our partners and other ecosystem builders who do amazing work every day in support of Canadian startups. And lastly, thanks to each and every one of you for joining us today and supporting Canadian entrepreneurs. If you'd like to connect with any of the teams you heard from, you can email my team directly. And with that, one final congratulations to our 12 startups and their incredible accomplishments. We can't wait to see what you all do next. Thanks everyone.